Hey, it's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. This is actually a pre-video clip. Um, this video that you're about to see is actually very long. I'm openly admitting it, but it is actually three parts. So there's part one, which was the original sample that was sent to me. I sent it to them for re uh, review and comment. Then part two, which was a second sample, which I also sent to them for comment and review. And part three is wrapping up the part three is actually wrapping up the whole thing. Now, because of how long it is, if you want to skip ahead, there's ways you can tell because the color of my shirt changes from white to blue to yellow. And also the timing mark is about 37 minutes for the end of part one, start of part two, and about an hour and nine, an hour and 10 for the end of part two and start of part three. So if you want to skip ahead, please be my guest. You can jump right to the end, which is basically a too long didn't read for a video and you can hear my final thoughts about well PCB. So thanks very much and I hope you enjoy the video. It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today's video is going to be a review, unboxing as you will, of some new PCBs courtesy of well PCB. Now this is not the first time that I've done videos on PCBs from PCB manufacturers. This I believe is actually my third because previously, you know, I've used all PCB and I've also used PCB way. And so it was a little bit of a surprise for me when well PCB actually approached me a couple of weeks ago and started a dialogue where they asked me if I was interested in trying their service. So for the purposes of transparency in regards to what I'm going to be showing you today is that one, I'm not paid for this video and all the opinions that I say are true to what I believe and feel from what we're going to see. And two, well PCB provided me with the PCBs. So yeah, take that however it is that you want in the context that, you know, I didn't ask for it, but they're also not paying me for any of the content that we're going to be seeing. So I had a discussion with them and they said, you know, we want to send you some samples. Can you please do us a review under some conditions? And I am very, shall I say, um, very adamant in, in when conditions are put upon me, especially when it comes to reviews. So I asked them, what are these conditions that you have? And they wanted to see the video before the video was released. So for you, well PCB, because obviously you're going to be watching this before it gets released, I am holding to my promise in that, yes, you will be seeing this video, but I'm also holding to my promise of what I said to you in that I will not be editing or reshooting this video. What I have promised to them, so if you're seeing this on YouTube, of course, is that they will have a right to reply before this video is released on YouTube. What does that mean? Well, it means that if any of the things that I've said is either incorrect, misconstrued, or you know, if there's a quality issue or something like that, and they want to come back with a response, I'm more than happy to share, discuss, show that response with all of you out there. And of course, that will actually follow as like an add-on merge to this video that I'm shooting right now. So now that we kind of have all of those people all of those bits and pieces out of the way, let's actually have a look at well PCB and then we'll open up the package and check out what I actually received. So off goes our logo and on goes my monitor. Now this is well PCB's website. It's pretty, it's pretty flash. It's pretty schmick. Let's just turn off the face cam so we can see it in its entirety. There you go. Uh, I find it interesting that it's obviously using some kind of IP tracking thing because it says it's registered in Australia when I know that it is a Chinese based company. The package came from China, the communications, the persons who spoke to me, their signatures had Chinese address and details in it, and their English was very obvious, not native speaker. It's, it's nice to see that you get free FedEx shipping if your PCB is less than 100 by 100. And they have a very basic quote, which, well, I don't like these quote boxes because they always take me somewhere else. And what I say by that is it never spits out something right here. It always takes you to a different page with a lot more details. Now, 
I have actually not used this on WellPCB. So I'm going to chuck it in and let's actually see what it does when, when I hit quote now. And bam. Okay, so now it's... Um, Okay, it's it's all right. It's given me a very very rough pricing down here. So it says it's going to cost me thirty dollars for ten pieces of this. And then if I actually want a full spec, then you know I can select some more details. So that's actually quite nice because a lot of the other pages won't do this. It'll take you to their full spec, which I'm assuming. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is. Oh, okay, two two layer. Oh, right, I'd have to refill these details. I'd, for some reason, I thought uh, that... Yeah, so this is what normally appears. This kind of stuff down here with all these other details is typically what the other manufacturers will actually provide. So in a way, it's kind of nice that it's hidden because they're making the assumption. And wow, the fact that you can actually see they've put in the, the actual variables here. That's actually pretty cool because I've not seen that before. The others generally won't tell you what the extra cost is, regardless if it's a, a fixed price or a percentage. So we can see, you know, if I want to turn that into uh, another, you know, thing. If I go to here, what's the price difference there? So there's no price difference between leaded and lead free, which is really nice. Uh, and of course, if I want to add immersion gold or whatever, there's there's the values now. I want to see if this changes, if my size changes, or if it's still fixed price. So let's have a look. That's percentage. These are fixed price. $20 extra for immersion silver. So if I bump this up to, say, 900 it's still just an extra $20. Well, that's pretty cool. So obviously, the larger PCB you have and the more gold fingers, I guess you might get a better return on that. Whereas you'll see down here, you know, it's 10% extra. It's 30% extra, not a fixed fee. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, uh, yeah, so that, that seems to be working pretty well. And I guess if we, we click around, they offer flexible PCBs, which is really nifty. That would be excellent for something like the, the Manuform Dactyl. The Dactyl Manuform? Dactyl Manuform. Right, okay, so just, just zipping around the site, it's fairly simple, not super crazy in, in advertising and it's got nice pictures good line spacing, easy to read and that's that so you can check out WellPC I suppose, WellPCB and check out their pricing against the other manufacturers yourself I'm not really going to be doing that right now, so let's get down to business before the Huns arrive here is the FedEx package I've opened only this packing slip bit to take out the actual commercial invoice that it came with via FedEx. I can't tell you how fast the actual product was manufactured because I didn't put in an order. I only provided them with a Gerber file of one of my designs and they said, okay, we'll produce it. So I don't actually know what their production speed is because it wasn't a paid order so they could have slotted in whenever they had the spare capacity. So that's not, a, that's not an accurate gauge and therefore I can't make comment against that. What I can make comment on is that it did come FedEx, as you can see. It was sent on the 3rd and it came on the 5th. So today is actually the weekend um, and, well, it's, it's when I've had time to, to check this out. So it actually took three days, which incredibly fast. Uh, but it's FedEx. You're also going to be paying a lot for it. And I did check out the invoice and it was $30 to ship this. So price for FedEx to them was $30, but as you see, if it's a less than 100 by 100, it doesn't cost you anything, supposedly, supposedly. So it's fully sealed. As you can see, there's no cuts or, or tears on the packaging. And uh, so my reaction and everything else is, is going to be interesting. Genuine, it's quite large. As you can see, it fills up my entire space, you know, relative to, my, to the size of my head. And I find that really interesting because the PCB that I actually sent them is nowhere near this big. And we'll find out very, very shortly. So out comes the trusty knife. And uh, here we go. It's this waxed paper, which is resisting. It's, it's nice because it's very durable. Uh, it's 
probably not very environmentally friendly, mind you. It's like poly coated or something like that. But it does provide water resistance. So that's always nice. Okay. Probably should get a, a sharper blade, eh? Alright. So that's the underside. Nothing else is in here. Underside, very plain. Side to side to side and top. Okay, so this came by FedEx. It was hand delivered by a guy. Uh, they actually called me and was like, I'm outside your place. I don't know where you are. Where do I deliver this? And I actually had to have it sent to my parents because I was at work. So, yeah. We've got a little bit of crush damage here. You can see the box is uh, is dented. So FedEx, good work, good job. They've taped all around it, which I suppose is kind of nice, but in a way a little bit unnecessary. Well, it's not opened up, but uh, it's not a locked front tab. It's only the two side inserts, which is fairly typical. The cardboard itself is quite flexy. You can see it's just not very, very strong and I suppose the sidewalls are okay. But, you know, PCBs are very durable, right? At 1.6 mils, it takes a lot of force to, to damage the actual PCB. What you do have to watch out for with PCBs flexing, though, is breaking and cracking your traces. So, you know, you'd, you'd want to make sure that's not going to happen. All right, so inside, we've got a bit of foam, which is nice. So that crush damage, obviously, has been mitigated by the fact that they've wrapped this foam. And this is what I'm talking about in the excessive packaging of the product. Now, whether the, the actual packaging would have been smaller, did they have a smaller box available? Uh, would it have been cheaper for them for FedEx to actually ship it in a smaller thing? Do they have a smaller satchel? I don't know. But this is like, it's smaller than a quarter of the size of this box. So, well, PCB, thank you very much for thinking about protecting it so well, but you might want to consider smaller packaging size options because you've had to pay somebody to cut little pieces of foam to, to fill it in. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, just, it's just a wasted time and effort for yourself. Now, I actually have no idea what else they've put in here for me and uh, hopefully it's nothing terrible. Okay, so, so that's production number, uh, quantity 10 pieces, relative humidity 75%, temperature less or equal to 35C. So that's interesting. I, I find that's really cool that they actually have that production detail there. So they finished it on the second and they shipped it out on the third. Now the packaging itself here is pretty standard. It's vacuum packed. It's got bubble wrap on one side and clear plastic on the other side, which we've seen very typical from all of the other manufacturers. And I don't know. So here we go, some some micro section analysis. Whoa, okay. I've never seen this before. The, the others have never put this in. Uh, and I, so this is really funny because I actually know what this is and I know exactly how this is prepared because I've actually prepared these these specimens. <laughs> but I love, I actually really love the fact that, so, so every other manufacturer, when you make an order, it actually at the bottom will say test services, inspection services. Now, if I go back to their online quote thing, Madubi, and see if I can just generate a random PCB and kick it up so we can see what's going on. Full spec. Um, does it actually show it? No. So so this is really interesting because let me just... Uh, okay, so typically at the bottom of a lot of manufacturers, they will actually have a thing about testing down here. And it'll be like, do you want it tested for impedance? Do you want it tested for this, that, and the other? Do you want it tested for uh, electronic um, interference and stuff like that? It doesn't look like they've actually got that here, but they've obviously, or it appears to have had some form of testing done, which is pretty cool, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, so let's get back to let's get back to this now. There's nothing else in the box. Uh, it's just foam, more strips of foam cut out to to neatly fit this huge box, which you know that's that's something that they could definitely improve. Uh, now, does this match to this item? First of all, production number four H. 2331A0 um, 2H2331111 A0 So this is really interesting because it doesn't seem to match the production number So why have I got a production number of something that is not my product? Driver Strobo Vim. Right, so so this is really interesting. This is definitely not related to what I had made, but I guess they sent this as an example of the actual inspection and test reporting that they can do. So I think that's pretty cool. If you do need a production test and you want to report, then here it is. This, this is all the kind of stuff that they go through and... Uh, are able to generate and it's you know approved and signed off by people now I, I want to have a quick 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 talk about what this puck is uh, I used to work in a microscopy lab I was a material specimen preparation specialist and this is really cool I actually have a whole bunch of these sitting around in in one of my storage containers I'm just gonna tilt my microphone right so this is actually a polished specimen and typically if you look up rotopole uh, you'll see things like this and what they do is they embed things and then they actually sand and polish and grind and smooth the surface down and then put this under a microscope now i can have a look at i can already see that the level that they've done here is very rough it's very very low polish quality because they would only be looking at this from a optical microscope point of view. Whereas the specimens that I used to prepare in the lab were actually for electron microscopy, where we would be polishing samples down to like a diamond 0.1 micron silica suspension or diamond suspension. And we would be hand polishing by the end of that rather than a machine polish. But how this specimen is produced is that there's this big machine, it's it's really big machine and there's like a chamber, it's like a, a barrel. What you do is you get powder, this white stuff, it's this resin stuff, and you pop in a couple of tabs of it into the bottom. And a plunger goes down into it and it lightly compresses it, so it forms like a bed. And then you can actually put your specimen into it, in this case a slice of PCB, and then you put more powder on top. And then it sort of tamps it back down again, then you seal it up, and then it pressurizes it. And what happens is that white powder actually turns into the polymer under heat and pressure. And so once that's done and it comes out, then you can start polishing. And you'll notice that if we look at this on a side profile, it's sitting on the bottom. Okay, well, the camera's probably not doing a very good job of, of showing that. But so this would have actually been the PCB would have settled and sunk down. One side of it probably would have been crushed, but they would have had to cut this and then they'd polish it. Now I don't know if this is going to show it very well, if it's going to focus or not. Okay, so there we go. So you can actually see there's the, the vias and there's the through holes that they are looking at. And if I turn it through the light, you can see the streakiness of that polish. That means they have only taken it up to probably, you know, maybe a couple of thousand grain of, uh, of polishing medium or sand paper, like you know, maybe two or three thousand, maybe as high as, I don't know, five thousand. When you get it to a mirror finish, that's when you're talking in the order of like tens of thousands or suspensions. So, so it's very reminiscent of my uh, my academic days of working in a lab producing material specimens. So that's pretty cool. So they would have put this under an optical microscope and somebody would have looked at it and checked it and that is what they would be looking at. So they've gone and looked at it. They've probably checked out the trace and measured it under the microscope at 20 micrometers thickness of copper. 
So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, enough of that. So obviously this is for somebody else's and uh, I hope, <laughs> I hope that a customer is not expecting this and not getting it because it came with my packet. So uh, yeah, if, if they were, I'm sorry, it's in Australia, not where it needs to be. Just put that back in the box and actually check this out. Now, this is a bit of a, a shameless plug, I suppose. So the Sydney Mechanical Keyboard Meetup is happening in December this year, 2018. And I had designed a numpad macro pad for that meetup and I called it the snag pad. So you'll actually see the label there if it'll focus. Wait, get in there. Snag pad, there it is. Uh, and of course, if you're an Australian, you'll you'll understand exactly what's going on when I open this up. It's very well vacuum sealed, just like everybody else's. And the plastic is quite thick and durable. You see, I have to make a couple of passes before I get in there. Oh yeah. Now they said, how many pieces do you want? And I said, I will take how many pieces you're willing to give me. So they said, is 10 sufficient? And I said, that's perfectly fine. So it's supposed to be a 10 count. Do we have 10? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so it's exactly as promised, uh, which is fine. I know some of the other manufacturers, I've ordered a couple of different batches of things. Some came exact, others came with extra. I'm guessing it's really just more of a, if there's spare space on the actual panel, then they might sometimes just chuck in stuff for free. Now, this, this pad is really interesting because there's a lot of fine detail in it, as well as not massive detail uh, and then large detail. So first and foremost, here is the silk screen. Let's check out the silk screen. Come on, get into focus. Camera's uh and silly buggers. Okay, so it's a little bit disappointing, um, first and foremost, because that silk screen is not solid. Now, if I get that back and focus again, if it'll focus, look at those white streaks. Those those clear streaks in that. That's that's actually very disappointing. This silk screen pattern, I know is meant to be solid all the way through and it's not so that's that's the first thing to be aware of the lettering that's actually okay i expect the lettering to look like that because the font was designed that way and it's meant to be people lining up at a barbecue tent uh, with a signboard out the front so if you know um, about snag stands then then that's exactly where the name snag pad comes from but the fact that we have these streaks on this first PCB means that silk screen actually didn't make it all the way through. And if I go down to the bottom, that logo of the board has no detail at all in regards to the actual keyboard. And that's also very, that's very disappointing. And I'm going to say that's very disappointing because I was actually hoping that it would have a little bit more detail than that because I have actually produced PCBs with our logo of that size and you can actually see the lines in it. Okay, so so that's the first one. Let's have a look. The second one, the second silk screen, exactly the same. It's got the same streaks running through that, same streaks running through that on the bottom where it should be solid. Third one's uh, a little bit better in terms of its consistency for the silk screen, but look at that massive line that's just cutting right through the middle of that. Fourth one, fifth, sixth. That one's that one's even more patchier. Look at that. That's, that's very patchy. Seventh, eight, ninth and 10th. So all of those silk screens are patchy. Something to be aware of, something to be aware of. Okay, now I'm just having a look at the surface traces. The traces seem to be okay. 
they they all look kind of connected and if I pull out a switch I'm just going to start putting them into some of these some of these holes and let's see how they go so right it's a nice to to fit that's fine there's no issues there at all pins go through the center stem goes through there's no binding of any sort which is good so at least in terms of dimensionality for for drill holes and whatnot they seem to be okay so I'm, I'm pretty confident like it's the same footprint that I use on all of my PCBs so I wouldn't expect there to be any issues uh, if one PCB was okay because the others should be cut exactly the same probably on the same panel so yeah cool now let's just flip it over to the other side and have a look at what's happening on the other side so the other side's pretty clean the silk screen's not too it's a little bit iffy there the the actual plating is it's really interesting i don't know if the the camera is going to pick this up but i'm going to try okay so on d15 Gonna focus. So on D15, if you look at the left and right square pads, right, the the SMD pads, do you see how there's like that lump there? As I tilt it, the shadows show you there's a lump. D16 has a little bit of a lump. D14 has a little bit of a lump. So. So this lumpiness that I'm seeing here on some of these is really interesting because a lot of the other manufacturers PCBs because I've done multiple ones now they're actually really smooth okay they're really smooth the fact that I can pick this up straight away and see it in the reflection and see like uh, I wouldn't say it's a blob of that means either there's too much there or the heat didn't apply long enough on the mask for it to smooth out there's no reason why you should be seeing visible peaks of solder mask at all now the other thing which is why i kind of stopped a little bit when i was talking about the this the the silk screen is the r4 is patchy R0 is fine, 1, 2, 3 starting in a patch, R4 is patchy. And on the other side, you can see C0, 1 is okay, 2 starting getting patchy, C3 is patchy. And then even the line for D5 and D7 on the actual diode orientation silk screen is patchy. <sighs> what can I say? I don't know if it was the machine that was producing these that was gone a little bit funny either it didn't have enough of the actual silkscreen uh, material or maybe the squeegee was stuttering as it was running across it or I honestly don't know I can't I can't make guesses on their behalf because I don't know what their equipment is like and their setup okay so is that going to be a consistent thing let's have a look at the second one yes Not too bad on this one, but yeah, a little bit. And the silk screen on this one's much nicer though. So if I go up and I show you the silk screen on this batch. Eey, come on. One of these days, when I actually have the finances to get something that's a little bit better reacting. Uh, there we go. So you'll see the actual silk screen on, on the R's and the C's. Are much cleaner and the d0 i mean the d7 that row is is fine oh i don't know what's happened to my color balance it's probably because my fingers were too pink or something uh, <laughs> the joys of working with webcams okay but you'll see if i tilt d6 on the left hand side of d6 the square pad there's like a little peak in there there's like a little reflecting blip and that's that's exactly what i'm talking about it's not it's not smoothed out 
on those on those solder pads where they should be they should be maybe i'm being too critical but at the same time like if you want a really high quality product for your customers and they have an expectation then you need to be able to expect quality right now yes i did not pay for this so i can't make any complaints about it i'm only making observations about it now so to wrap on the other things that i'm going to be looking at is just a continuity test very simple right so let's just go set it to 200 get my probes so there we go we have continuity and down to 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.4 i'd be pretty happy with and let's just put these back so I should expect that my diode row is going to be common across the points that I'm measuring. Yep. 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 That's good. That's good. That's good. To be honest, I would not expect there to be problems. Uh, I mean, PCB manufacturing is, is relatively automated these days. So as long as the Gerber that you provide is good, then it should be okay. And the traces look reasonable. Uh, now, if I go with my, my column continuity, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That one is a diode, so it shouldn't have an issue, which it didn't column which is good column diode column no column contact which is exactly where it should be column contact through that which is where it should be okay so it looks pretty pretty good now, in regards to the fitment of the Pro Micro, it's a Pro Micro footprint, so I wouldn't expect there to be any issues. Now, I'm not going to break out a Pro Micro to put it on there. Uh, it's just not, it's just not necessary at this point in time, and the traces all seem to go there. So, yeah. What can I say? Uh, what can I say at this point in time? gathering my thoughts here I would say for a entrant into the PCB manufacturing space they've done a reasonable job their pricing is I won't say they're the cheapest out there just with the pricing that I have kicked around with um, compared to some of the other manufacturers but you do have to factor in that if they're going to give you free shipping, they're going to be absorbing or redistributing the cost of that shipping somewhere else. And and that may be why the cost of the PCB is slightly higher. In terms of the quality, so electrically speaking, the traces are fine. They, they connect. The footprint sizes are fine. Components fit. The only thing that seems to be a little bit downward would be that their solder mask is not super, super clean and flat. But hey, if you're going to be SMDing stuff on it, it doesn't matter anyway. So it's not a huge deal. But the silk screen is the killer. The silk screen quality is just not there yet. Now, they might not be accustomed to full coverage silkscreen and they're more used to line silkscreen like on the actual switch corners that you can see here. So having graphics like we are very accustomed to in our builds and our designs, this is going to be a downfall for them. Is this simply a setting on the machines for the amount of silkscreen ink that is being put down? Is it a matter of settings in regards to the speed that the silk screen is applied to and so on and so forth? I don't know. Overall, 
I would say this is probably a seven, seven and a half out of 10 because the quality of the board looks fine. Um, like just looking at that, it's got a slight bend to it, like a little bit of a curvature. It's probably not showing up very well, but there is a little bit of flex to it. That's not gonna be a big deal. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty strong, pretty durable, as I would expect it to be for a 1.6 mil. You know, I'm very confident when I actually build one of these, when I get around to building one of these, it's gonna work. It's just that the graphics aren't up there yet. So, well, PCB, well, PCB. You built them well, but you just haven't graphicked them well. They were well packaged, and it was sent well, and uh, well, yeah, seven and a half out of 10, solid effort. So I wanna say thank you to World PCB, of course, for actually sending me these samples. And you know, I'm gonna have some here. Uh, I'm gonna build one and it's gonna be sandwich type. So it'll be a top and a bottom, unless if I can get a plate and, and case kind of bottom done by Laser Ninja. And then the excess uh, I'll probably have available for either giveaway uh, as part of the channel or possibly also at the actual Sydney meetup itself. Depending on my finances and how we go for, you know, generating goodie bags and raffle tickets and stuff like that, I might be able to get more of these manufactured and they'll be included. But as far as prototyping goes, always, always, always test first before you commit to a large amount of manufacturing. Because like my fan pad, I discovered I'd actually missed a trace, which uh, as embarrassing as it is, was good because I caught that when I did a prototype rather than you know, if I'd plowed on ahead and done other things with it without actually testing that. So there you go. So that is the Well PCB uh, review. So thank you, of course, guys, for checking out this video. Really appreciate it. At the time of this video, we're now over 2,000 subscribers, so yay. And of course, we've got the giveaways happening for the two COSCAPs. You can check those links out uh, from the previous videos. Of course, you'll have to check out the channel and the playlist and whatnot. And I believe we've also got our two year anniversary giveaway happening at the same time, which is for two sets of a missile pod macro pad, which includes acrylic plates, pro micro as well, but no switches or keycaps, unfortunately. Right here. Now, I wanna say a huge thank you, of course, to all of our Patreon supporters which you can see over here, what you guys do over there. Um, what you guys do for us constantly is give us, you know, your support, which makes things happen. So really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And with that, it's uh, time for me to say goodbye. So, as usual, until next time, happy clacking. Hey everyone, it's Don here again from the board, and we're actually now into part two of the well PCB review. Now, the first part, which I'm hoping you would have actually looked through and getting to this point, I had actually recorded and as per the conditions of me getting a sample to review for them, I had let them see the video without releasing the actual video to get their feedback on the kinds of issues that I had found. And as a very quick recap, it was primarily the silk screen was a little bit funny, there were sort of lines on it. The resolution wasn't super great because as you can see on the logo, there's sort of a number of fine lines available on our logo and therefore the resolution of their silk screen didn't quite show some of those details. And then in addition to that, I had found that the pads, the SMD pads on the actual solder mask weren't even and flat. Now I couldn't really show it easily using the webcam setup that I have. But what I did was I went and took some pictures as part of my email back and forth with WellPCB because they reviewed it and they asked for a bit more so that they could understand what was happening since the English sort of communications between us were probably not translating 100% what, what I was trying to get across. And I must say, to give them full credit, they were actually really happy to get the feedback and they told me that the silkscreen machine can be really finicky and sometimes it doesn't produce the best results and that they were actually more than happy to re 
produce those PCBs again to meet my standards. What's really interesting on that is I said, you know, you didn't have to simply because of the fact that it is a sample run, I'm not a paying customer, but they felt that, you know, because they want to treat all customers the same regardless of payment or not, since it is a reputational matter, they still want to fix those issues. So there was a, a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a delay. I'm not sure if their rep had forgot about it or things were miscommunicated, but a couple of weeks have actually passed in between and I sort of poked them and I said, hey, what's happening? Do you still want to send me a replacement or should I just go ahead and do another video talking about your response and release the video? And they went, oh yeah, no, sorry. We're, we're definitely going to get it done. And then four days later, this turns up. So they certainly expedited it. I don't know if it was already in their production run or if they paid extra for the FedEx because the FedEx said it was actually going to get here uh, in another four days. So it came way faster than the FedEx prediction said it would. So, hey, but that's, that's neither here or there. Now, before I crack this open and have a look at what they sent me, they did tell me specifically that they had changed the solder mask to be a gold finish, a gold surface finish treatment because it gave more consistent results. This is really important because you can get this done, but it costs more. So on a scale of fairness, uh, it's kind of hard to compare because you're no longer comparing apples to apples, but you're kind of comparing Granny Smith's to Nashi pears because they're kind of like apple-ish, but it is a technically a different material. It is technically a different technique. And of course, the results that you're going to get is going to be slightly different. However, also, before we kind of get into that, I want to show you the pictures that I took so you can understand the kind of issue that I was talking about. So I'm just going to switch over to my that away and uh, let's check it out. So, so there we go. So this is the, the top picture here is I was using a loop. Can I, does that, ooh, is there a way of zooming this? Uh, there we go. And so what you're seeing here, I know it's a little bit chunky now since I've zoomed into it, is you can see that edge of the solder mask shows that there's a bulge here. It's not showing a consistent smoothness of treatment. Now, either they put this on as a paste and then the reflow oven didn't smooth it out or I'm not 100% sure. Now, the reason why this kind of matters is because what I was expecting to see and what I have seen on other PCBs is this, which if we zoom this in, you'll see it's actually really nice and smooth and even. And that was what I showed to them and I said this is what I would anticipate if you had a good solder pad for SMD components because you want your components to sit nice and flush even with paste or solder that you apply to it so you get a really good contact. So now let's uh, head back over to the desktop and here we are. So I've got what they sent me originally outside the packet and I've got this new packet I don't know what my neighbors are doing underneath me because they're banging and if you're hearing that, that's really normal, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to hang up a lot of pictures all the time or, or something. Every weekend, I kid you not. I'm just glad that my daughter sleeps through it because right now she's having a nap and uh, I would be really annoyed if that woke her up. I really don't know why they do it. Well, I mean, they must have a reason, but I'm just saying I don't know what the reason is for them to be constantly hammering on the walls. Apartment life, yo. Okay, so I think that's torn sufficient. I can man mode that open. Okay, so nothing in here again, just like just like last time. It can go down there and once again we have another huge box so this is exactly the same size as the one they sent last time uh, which is here so we're talking we're talking overkill right 
well PCB you need to get yourself a smaller logo or, or vectorize it down and get yourself some smaller boxes because that's um, it's nice but super overkill super overkill now once again they've taped it over the front this time the box has actually turned up really well there's there's no crush damage at all so FedEx good job didn't uh, month the box like the other one did okay there we go now let's see once again really well packed we've got uh, everything in here with this this foam I can lift that and hey, check it out once again they sent another through hole test oh okay ah right okay I know what's going on here so they had actually sent me an email with some pictures to show what they'd done I didn't really look at them very hard or pay attention I was just kind of like oh okay they, they I actually thought they'd taken those pictures before they had vacuum packed it but obviously they had it prepped and then they cut it open and pulled them out so I'm not going to say that I'm truly disappointed but from a customer service perspective it is a little bit it is a little bit disappointing because if you're going to take this level of effort to produce something like this nobody wants to open a packet and see something that's already open unless if it's been opened by customs or you know somebody who who has legal say to poke into the contents of your shipping items because that is not a nice look it doesn't make you feel good right um, but I can understand what's happened there and and whatnot um, and the other thing that I can see straight away is they've sent me a packet of five pieces instead of ten pieces which was the original which not a problem you know these are samples I didn't pay for them no no complaints there at all so let's just take them aside for one I'll just uh, pop that back and let's pull this out there's nothing else in here it's just got that foam which is great and once again this is another another quality test now so there's a production number here uh, it's 2i2 33111a2 ah here we go it's actually my product this time so there's the customer part number and it's called the snag pad which is what this actually is so that's actually pretty cool so they've actually gone through and, and done the QC test on this it seems like it checks ticks across everything there's a bunch of through hole tolerance dimension measurements and copper nickel aluminium looks good and of course if I was to uh, actually pull this out and look at it very very carefully ah yeah that's pretty cool maybe that's why they only sent me five but so this is something that I do and maybe I should just take it out of the bag it'll be easier to see it in the bag but this is actually really cool and you can tell it's yours if you recognize the silk screen on it just by looking at the actual sample now you can't see on that side but if I rotate that around and camera gonna hey r2 r3 and d6 and I recognize that kind of writing because that's what I do for my pin assignments so they've actually taken one of these production boards and it's got the the gold finish on it and they've cut through it sideways it's trying to focus but it's probably not it's not doing a good job because it's trying to focus on the background there we go and then they've looked at that under a microscope and measured and checked against the thickness of the actual layers and the through hole so that's pretty cool and once again looking at this in the light with my own experience about specimen polishing it's pretty rough as far as polishes go but for the purposes of what they need it for I suppose it does just fine because they're only looking at the thickness they're not looking at under an electron microscope a light microscope this kind of level is is fine even with that massive bubble on the surface there but uh yeah that's actually really cool awesome source so 
this time I have all the confidence in knowing that in theory it meets all the quality tolerances that was required for this board. So now we get down to the nitty gritty. So there's the snag pad, there's the number there, the 2i233 I that matches. It was made on the 25th, so they definitely rushed it because today is the 30th and it arrived on Friday, which was the 28th. So from being made on the 25th and getting to me on the 28th, that's super quick and quantity five pieces. So there we go. Now let's peel it out and we've definitely got one, two, three, four, five and voila, hey, there is the silk screen. So let's check out what we have on our silk screen. Okay, so the finish is definitely more solid compared to previous. So if I'm going to get one of these, we can do a straight up side by side comparison. And because they've used the gold finish on it, you'll be able to tell straight away which one's which. But uh, if I can get the focus, come on. Oh, I'm going to be I'm going to be so glad one day when there we go. So let's pull that back down. You can see on the left hand side there's a lot of lines and patchiness whereas on the right hand side it's a lot more solid so they've definitely upped the game in regards to getting that silk screen issue fixed or at least filled. What is interesting that's not showing on the camera is that on the left hand side even though the silk screen's a bit patchy it looks like it's thicker whereas on the right hand side while the silk screen is more solid, it actually looks like the silk screen is thinner. And I can actually see the traces. You can see the bumps of the solder mask and traces where the copper layer is running across and under it, which is really, really interesting. So they've kind of thinned out maybe the, the silk screen material so that like you can still see it. Or maybe it's just my my eyes get distracted by the vertical lines like you can still see it there but it just feels like the solder mask on this was actually thicker not that it's a problem because the solder mask when you look at it from a distance and you see it like your attention is taken by the image it's taken by the graphic that's on there as it should be now if we have a look at our resolution quality down here okay so we've definitely got a lot better quality so if we look at the the first series if it'll focus come on come on come on come on okay so it's pretty scratchy on the bottom there that u shape under the microphone the outline of the actual keyboard itself isn't fantastic um, there's actually meant to be a couple of stripes there but you can't see them either but at least now with that nicer silk screen on the second series you've got much 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 cleaner lines now there is that sort of L shaped line across the microphone that's not the silk screen's fault that's actually because of the footprint of the switch above it so that's why there's that that weird mark there but it's a lot cleaner so silk screen issues good if that's that's been all resolved at least on this side now if we flip it over to this side and we have a look once again we can do a straight up Comparison. So there was a bit of issues with the labels on the. It's gone and done that weird discoloring as, again. Okay, so so this one's not too bad, but some of those the R's and C's were a bit patchy, but it looks like they're a lot more solid this time round. So the silk screen on the back is definitely also not an issue. And now, if I look at these SMD pads they look absolutely gorgeous they are smooth as i'm not going to say they're as smooth as a baby's bottom because babies don't got smooth bottoms they sure do not and i know that for a fact but i have just spotted ah <sighs> i had such high hopes now this is once again 
not a super bad criticism. This is just this is just how it is. Now here is here is the loop that I use, and whether it'll be able to pick it up or not, I mean, I can definitely see it here. I'm going to try and capture it with my camera if I can, but um, even their gold finish process is not 100% foolproof. Now this gold finish is laying a gold surface layer over the copper layer, and this is really important because your copper layer will oxidize. And if you get oxidation, what that means is you're not going to get a good electrical contact, right? If you solder something onto something that is oxidized, you're not going to get a good join and you're going to be getting patchy or no electrical conductivity. The solder problem here was less of an issue in that there was plenty of solder to the point where it was bulging, but there was no visible copper. I have visible copper here. Now, I'm going to apologize if this doesn't work, but ooh, it's, it's kind of working. So, D1. I'm, I'm trying to tilt it. See how there's that weird color difference as I'm tilting it? There's that really shiny brightness, and then there's the dullness next to it. Now, it's not doing a good job because it's the webcam wigging out at, at the same time trying to keep focus because I'm wobbling all over the place. But I'm definitely going to take a picture of it for, for uh, well PCB. But what, what you're seeing there, that discoloration, the darker patch right now in D1 on the left-hand side is gold. The lighter patch is actually copper. It's actually exposed copper. Now the right hand side of the D1 S and D pad you can see is actually quite even. The The discoloration changes is really more just about surface than anything else whereas the color that's happening on the left hand side is actually it is exposed copper. Um, and you can actually see it in not the adjusted light but it's oxidized. So, yeah, that's, they tried, they tried. Now, out of five of them, I'm going to put that one away because we don't really need to reference that one anymore. Out of the five that they have produced, how many of the rest have a n incomplete surface. Now I'm just checking on the other side now very quickly to see if there's any other visual defects and while I'm doing that I might as well also check our switch fitment like I did last time. Uh, okay so why do I not have any five pins in here? I had one last time. That's the problem with having so much stuff everywhere is uh, Finding someone that's suitable. Okay. There we go. There's a five pin. Right. Uh, I would expect the fit to be pretty decent. Okay. So I've put that in and you can see it's not falling out. So it's definitely, it's definitely fitting in. PCB mount switch, no issues. That's a little bit loose. Um, yeah. That one's it's a bit on the loose side there, to be honest. Which it's not a it's not a killer, but it just means when you do actually come to solder these and you and you sort of snap them in, if they're not sitting in there like they're supposed to, um, then it's going to be a bit of a challenge because ideally you want them to sit in there. Everything else that I've had made have used exactly the same footprints as these, so there's no reason why those switches should be falling out. Now, of course, to be fair, let's go back to the last batch of PCBs because it's exactly the same Gerber file, right? It's exactly the same Gerber. Now, if I take this and I snap it into, where's my orientation? There's my orientation. And if I snap it into these, okay, so that doesn't fall out. 
and that's that same corner one, that doesn't fall out. So that's a second thing that is slightly different in this particular run with these gold plate ones is that the drill holes seem to be a little bit larger and my switches are actually falling out of them. That's, uh, it's an annoyance, but it's not an absolute deal breaker. So we've got one with exposed copper. So that top surface looks good. It's a little bit of a, a dirty mark. I don't know if that's going to show it or not, but you can kind of see in the reflection that there's some, some dirtiness there. I mean, that'll clean off, but that's, that's not nice. Now, let's have a look at the rest of the pads on this one. Okay, so that one's okay. Silk screen. Looks fine. Silk screen is fine. Pads are okay on that side. Pads are okay on that side. Silk screen is fine. Quick scan of the pads is fine. Silk screen looks fine on this side. And the pads look fine on that one. And lucky last, silk screen is good. The pads on this side seem to be fine. And then on the other side, seem to be fine as well. Okay, so we've only got a 20% and realistically, it's even less than that because there's a lot of pads on each PCB and only one of them has come up with that problem. Now I'm going to get that same cherry green switch and now I'm just going to pop them in to uh, these footprints. Right, so that's a fail. That's a fail. Well, that's it's it's in between. And then lucky last. Okay, so that's a pass. So we've got well, that first one was actually a fail, wasn't it? Because it didn't hold. Yes, that, that didn't even hold. So we've got one that's passed, one that's just on the border, and three, the holes don't fit. Whereas on the original run that they did for me, it did pass. So, I mean, hey, that's, that's just for completeness. For completeness sakes. Uh, let's pull out all ten these and, and run through that. Alright, so let's set it that way. Pass. You can tell when you put them in. Pass like the resistance that you get when you put them in pass 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 that's a pass and lucky last that's a pass so the original batch that they did for me that had the silk screen and the inconsistent solder pads on the SMDs their drill holes are great 
These ones with the improved silk screen, with the better surface finish using the gold, has now got larger drill holes than the spec wanted. And we've also had one instance of where the actual surface mount pads were not completely coated properly in the gold finish. So, where, I mean, where, where am I gonna go with this? What, what are my final thoughts? My final thoughts right now is, while they're capable of producing quality by the looks of it, they definitely have some QC issues. I'm not gonna call them problems because you're always gonna expect there's gonna to be tolerance. Now I could go through and try fitting this on every one of these switch holes and I can tell by feel that you know some of these have much better fits than others. Some of them just there's like a little bit of a, a resistance as they go in and others don't. Now you know I can I can do this and check every single hole if I want to but it only takes one hole like that one just fell straight out. It only takes one hole for it to not pass a quality board because if it's the same footprint and you've got such a wide variance on the single board then you got issues either your drills are worn and it's ripping out holes bigger or they've used the wrong drill bit that was the wrong size or you know the the actual machinery doing the drill if it's belt driven or if it's chain driven there's slop and slack in it so it's actually not moving to the right spots and things like that there's there's all sorts of potential reasons why you're going to have these kind of issues but at the end of the day what does that mean it means you're not getting what you actually ordered if it was a high tolerance part and a very specific fitment then definitely you're going to have issues um you know to the point where i've just gone and had a look at the trace lines some of these traces run really close to those drill holes and while i'm sure they have electrical connection you then have a risk you're introducing a risk because if your holes are actually bigger than they're meant to be it means there's a risk that you're cutting across that trace that's that's as simple as it is um, you know they look fine on both but if you're fractions of a millimeter out it could have really big impacts really big impacts okay so I know this video has gone for a really long time now because it's two videos mushed together uh, I could release them as separate parts but for for ease to understand and watching through the whole thing it is going to be a long sit through but it's important because if you are considering to use well PCB to manufacture PCBs, understand that they appear to have really good customer service because they communicated really well with me, they were quick in their responses, and they were willing to ask for information to see what was going on. The downside is you may get a hit and miss with the actual quality of what you're ordering. The upstroke, on that would be if they've got good customer service you do find defects and you contact them they're probably likely to send you replacements or fix them but of course that's going to cause you additional delays if you're prototyping that might be an issue if you're on a time aspect if you're mass manufacturing then that could be very costly because you're not able to get your product out there and you would have to do your own internal qc to make sure what you're being sent from them is also up to par which of course adds more time, more labor, more cost to what you're trying to do. So there you have it. There is part two and the response from WellPCB in addressing the things that I raised. Uh, I wanna say thanks to WellPCB and all of their customer reps who I've spoken with to make this happen. And of course, I wanna thank you guys for actually sitting through and watching all of this because I realize it's quite an extensive video. I will actually take a picture of this half plated pad uh, whichever one it is because now I've lost it amongst these five I will find it there it is it's that one and, and I'll put it on Instagram for the board podcast so you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about and I'm not just talking out of my backside 
Incidentally, my daughter has just woken up, so this is a perfect time for me to wrap up on this video. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more, please hit like, please hit share, please subscribe. And if you want to support us in all the stuff that we do in regards to podcasting about mechanical keyboards, doing builds, artisans, just random stuff, then head on by our Patreon and you can show us some love for as little as a buck a month. So, simple. Rightio, thanks for checking out the video. I hope you took something away from this. And uh, once again, thank you, WellPCB, for making this happen. And I'll be talking to you very shortly. So, until next time, happy clacking. It's Don here, and we're back for part three of this video. Now, I realize that uh, it's probably a very, very long video by now, and I've kind of compacted it all together into one video rather than spreading it out but I wanted to wrap up my final thoughts on this whole thing about WellPCB. Now, uh, if you hear weird noises going in the background, that's because my daughter's watching The Lion King. That's a little bit of a distraction. She's had a, a challenging day today. So yeah, that's what's happening in the background with a bit of Sir Elton John going on. Now, just as a recap, because if you're skipping through this and you're kind of getting to the too long didn't read part, this original journey started on the August 17th when WellPCB first contacted me. I didn't actually get the samples and do the video until the 8th of September. So that was part one. Part two came about when I got the second lot of samples, which was these, and I did the video on the 30th of September. I left them opportunities to give me feedback both times, and due to national holidays, they didn't actually view the video until after the 9th of September, uh, in which they gave me a response about my part two, which I'm going to talk about very shortly. And we are now here on the 14th of September. So essentially, <clears throat> the quality that WellPCB has made is a little bit up and down. The, the base PCB that they made was fine, except their solder pads had a little bit of inconsistency, their solder masking quality was a little bit inconsistent. Did you want to come up? No? You sure? You don't want to come up? It's in September. Okay. <laughs> no, it is September. Um, no, my, my wife had just basically asked and said that I said September, but actually it's been a whole month for this entire process. Um, so, see, live, live recording as it was. Uh, I don't do things by cuts and edits because this is reality here captured in video. So, so the original PCBs that was produced, there was quality issues with the silkscreen. So, you know, very quick recap, there was lines, there was streakiness, it just wasn't quite there. And also the actual solder mask that was applied to the SMD pads were inconsistent. They were lumpy and bumpy and stuff like that. So they thought that they would up their game and produce me some more because they wanted me to be satisfied with the product. So I said, fine, go ahead, send it to me. They sent it to me and that was version two where they actually put in a little bit extra and they got some gold plate finish on theirs. Now the silk screen problem was fixed up, but I discovered that on one of these, the actual pad itself was not completely covered with gold and it actually had copper exposed. So that was not very good at all. And the second thing I discovered in the part two video, of course, was that the drill holes were loose. The drill holes were loose. Now, I sent them pictures and they obviously saw the video. I gave them the close-ups of it and I want to read to you the response that they came back to me after they watched the part two. <clears throat> Just scrolling through the mass of emails and so they said, we have a tolerance for the holes just want to double check that the component legs will be soldered onto the board so the loose holes will not affect the use of the boards. Is that right? If yes, can you please also address this in the video? They completely ignored and blew off the fact that that pad was not covered. Now, if you went and ordered a thousand of these PCBs for a production run and every single one of them had that defect on one or more of those SMD pads, would you be upset about it? I would be, because one in five, this is the only sample size I have, one in five had this defect. That's 20%.
So if you ordered a thousand, then a 20% defect rate is going to be massive. That's going to be 200 PCBs that are potentially going to have bad quality pads on it. Not even a comment about that. Their only concern was that these drill holes were loose because as I showed on part two, the switch was going in, I'd flip them upside down and they'd just pop out. Now, yes, my response to Warren in email was they will be soldered, but loose holes is still a problem. Why are loose holes a problem? Loose holes are a problem because when you solder a keycap, sorry, when you solder a key switch into this, if the hole tolerances are really big and that switch can rotate, that means when you put your keycap on it, your keycap's also going to rotate. For one U keycaps, less of an issue, but it will accentuate the McRip effect, so your key alignment will look off, so your caps will look wonky. And if you're very keen and discerning, and some people's sense of spatial alignment is very, very good, that would really annoy the buggery out of you. The second part to that, though, is if you're using a longer U, like if that hole was not perfect for the space bar, then over the distance of 6U, if it's rotated, that means your spacebar is going to be potentially at an angle. And then it's going to be more of a pain because you're going to be twisting the stem or you have to go and resolder it to try and get it to fit into your stabilizers. So I actually find that to be not very acceptable. But you know what? I told them that in the response and the only response that came back to them was, can you please check the diameter of the large holes? I said that I couldn't measure it accurately because my calipers can't fit inside them, but they're just under two millimeters. And then I didn't hear anything from them for a few days. I wrote back and I said, is there anything else that you want to address here? Because I haven't heard from you. And they said, no, it's fine. You can release the videos and we will try and control our production errors. So they're admitting that they have production errors. And of course, that, that means they're going to have to do some control. How they're going to do it, I don't know. What, what else can I say? That's really where that's at. Now, so in conclusion, well PCB can make you PCBs that work. I think the price that they offer them at is probably close to competitive. I would say that they're worthwhile that you can probably have a stab at for prototype production if you're going to do small runs because it's not going to cost you the ends of the earth and any defects that you experience in a prototype run like what I've got here is probably work around a bull. Okay, so you can still put your stuff together, you can still test your circuit design, you can still test your fit, but I wouldn't expect the super highest quality out there. Would I recommend them for mass production? It's very hard to say. Now, if you were doing a very, very large run and you had concerns about this, I would say you would contact them and say that they would need to have a service level agreement that their failure rate of any errors has to be below a certain limit. And of course, what that acceptable limit is, is entirely up to you, the customer who is ordering these. Because like I said, if you're doing 1000 PCBs, if you're doing 10,000 PCBs, and there's a 20% chance that you're going to get a bad quality mask, you're going to get a oversized hole for a component, or you're going to get a solder pad that's incomplete, then that is just not acceptable. So it's a risk to take. All manufacturers will run a similar kind of risk because if they don't catch that their drill bits when they're doing their drill holes is worn and is gouging much larger holes, you're still going to run into the same problems. It's about the customer service and if they're going to bend over backwards to fix the problem that they created. And it seems like that they're willing to come part way at least because they were very open about the communications and working forward. But they've reached a point where they've either said, you know what, we're not going to try and fix this problem or address this because this is just a review in the sample. But for an actual proper paying customer, that might be a completely different story. So end of the day, I'm going to say 7 out of 10 for quality in general. I'm going to say an 8 out of 10 for customer service because they really did try. But the trust level there, the trust factor there for me right now is that I'm not likely to do a large scale run with WellPCB at this point in time. So there you have it. Thanks very much for checking out the entire video. I know it's going to be quite long over an hour. If you did pay that much time into it, 
Uh, thank you very much. If you haven't and you've kind of skipped to the end to try and catch this, then doesn't matter. Thanks very much for your interest and seeing what was going on. And of course, if you're interested in seeing in more detail what I was talking about, then you can see some of the pictures of the solder pad defects on our Instagram because I did put the pictures up there. And of course, you can just jump back and forth within this video to actually find out the rest of the issues and, and my sort of attempts to show them up on the closer camera. This one thing up here. Okay, that is pretty much a wrap. Once again, thank you to WellPCB for sending me the samples and this opportunity to actually check out and review and be open to criticizing your quality control and working with me to get this fixed. And I'll say thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for making our podcast happen. Uh, really appreciate that as well. So, as usual, until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>